Okay, so we're going to try and calculate the um, electric field and displacement um, field and capacitance of a spherical capacitor. So I'm going to draw two conducting shells, one inside the other. These are spherical shells. And we're going to throw in a little twist here. Um, that this capacitor is divided into two halves. Um, the left half is going to be filled with one kind of dielectric, and the right half is going to be filled with another kind of dielectric. All right, and uh, this one's going to have permittivity Two, and this one will have permittivity epsilon 1. And um, so we know from our boundary conditions that um, along this boundary right here, the parallel components of the electric field are going to be equal. And because there's no uh, free charges along this boundary, the uh, perpendicular components of the displacement field will also be equal. And from this we know um, that we'll be able to use Gauss's law. So if we take the dot product of um, the displacement current with uh, this area and integrate all the way around, um, we will be left with the charge that's enclosed. Okay, so we're going to call that a uh, big Q um, on the inside and on the outside will be minus big Q. Alright, so this is going to be equal to big Q. Okay. Now when we um, take this integral on one half, we'll get, uh, for the area, we'll get 2 pi. And there will be times the, so the d on, on one half will be um, e uh, times epsilon 1. And this is all in the, in the radial direction. Okay, plus the other half here, so 2 pi and epsilon 2 this time equals big Q. All right, so from this we'll be able to find what this, um, what the electric field is. It'll completely be in a radial direction, so the vector is going to be R. All right, this is a subscript arm, um, just the radial component of the electric field, and the other components are going to be zero. It's only in a radial direction. And so we'll just solve for this ER from this, uh, this equation up here, E sub R. Um, so we have Q over 2 pi epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Alright, and let's see, something's, oh yeah, I forgot to have the, um, this is all in R squared here, because we're, we need units for our area, right? Okay, so there's an R squared here, good, that's what we expected. Alright, again, in the R hat direction. Alright, so now we know the electric field. And um, it's constant all the way around the um, capacitor. And you might be wondering, well, I thought when you put a dielectric into an empty capacitor, for example, or if you um, strengthen the uh, dielectric constant of the capacitor, the magnitude of the electric field will decrease. And that would be the case here, except um, 
due to the different polarizabilities of these two materials, um, you'll get more bound charge on one side than the other, and so you'll get more free charge pulled off to one side uh, than the other. So in this case, the, the charge redistributes itself on the conductors, and we're able to get the, um, the electric field will be uniform all the way throughout. And so we satisfy this boundary condition up here. So um, let's solve for this displacement field. So on one side, so we have, um, I'll just do this for, for side one. All right. All right, now we just plug right, plug this right in. Like that. And similarly for uh, let's see, to the other side. So now we found the electric field and the displacement field. The electric field is constant all the way around this entire capacitor. Well, the displacement field is um, different um, on, from one side to the other. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work through um, finding the capacitance for this capacitor. Um, so we have our electric field here. And first, um, well, we know that uh, first we have to find the uh, potential of this um, capacitor. So um, we're just going to, if we come back here, and we'll call the, the, the inner radius A and the outer radius B. We're going to integrate the um, electric field uh, from A to B. case uh, we'll just be going in the R, the radial direction. Okay, so if we plug in our E here, we have Q, 2 pi, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2, 1 over R squared, dr, okay. We have constants out front. that. Um, I'll just make a little brace right here. Um, all right, so this one will be faster at this than I will. Yeah, it's one R B B. Okay. So long story short. A short story long. Now we'll have to 
um, consider this as kind of two different capacitors in um, in uh, parallel. Um, so they're just going to be added together, and um, okay. Did I write that right? Yeah. All right. Now the thing of it is, though, is these two different capacitors in parallel will have different um, charges on them um, because we talked about before, the different polarizabilities of the two materials cause different amounts of bound charge, which will attract different amounts of free charge, whichever order that goes in, and you'll end up with these two different uh, charge densities on the different halves of the, of the um, inner and outer um, shells. So Q1 is actually just going to be proportional to this permittivity one over the sum of the two times q. So it's just a simple um, sort of a percentage of the total, um, the, the sum of the uh, permittivities. All right. So if we want to find c1, q1 over v, and we know our RV here. So let's see. Okay, and then the V is going to be Q and then the two pi. down from this V that we did before. Um, and then let's write this out real quick. So a V minus A over A B. So here it will be an A B over B minus A. Alright, this will cancel with this, this will cancel with this. And so C1 equals 2 pi epsilon 1 times a b over b minus a. All right, and c2 will be similar, 2 pi epsilon 2 this time. And then when we just add these two, we get the total capacitance. Here's the total capacitance of, of this capacitor.